Hello everyone. We are here to study thermal expansion. So what's thermal expansion? Thermal expansion, the name itself says expansion due to thermal energy. That is expansion due to heat. Yes, whenever a matter is heated without changing state, it expands. It expands in size, it expands in shape, it expands in volume. This is known as thermal expansion. We can see when an object is heated, it expands with respect to size, shape and volume. Depending upon this, it can expand one dimensionally, it can expand two dimensionally, it can expand three dimensionally. All this expansion leads to thermal expansion. Depending upon this, this expansion can be linear expansion, aerial expansion and volume expansion. Let's move ahead and see what is linear expansion. Linear expansion, the name itself says, when a metal rod is heated, it expands. Let us consider an example. Let us consider a metal rod with length L at 0 degree Celsius. When it is heated up to 3 degree Celsius, its length increases to L. So here, final length is L and initial length is L naught. Now, experimentally, it is said that increase in length, that is L minus L0 is directly proportional to its original length that is L0 and increase in temperature that is rise in temperature that is T minus 0 or we can say it as delta T. So I can say that L minus L0 is directly proportional to L0 delta T. Therefore L minus L0 is equal to alpha L0 delta T. Alpha here stands for coefficient of linear expansion. Now, final length after heating is given by L is equal to L0 plus L0 alpha delta T. Moving ahead for superficial expansion, also known as aerial expansion. Let us consider an example of metal plate. A metal plate, when heated, it expands. It expands in its area. We will consider a metal plate with area A0 at 0 degree Celsius. When expanding, it becomes A at 3 degree Celsius. Here, A is the final area, A0 is the initial area. Hence, increase in area will be A minus A0, which is experimentally said that, which is directly proportional to its original length and rising temperature. Here, rising temperature, we can say it as delta T. In this way, we can say that A minus A0 is directly proportional to A0 delta T. Therefore, A minus A0 is equal to beta A0 delta T, where beta is coefficient of aerial expansion, also known as coefficient of superficial expansion. Now, final area after heating is given as A is equal to A0 plus A0 beta delta T. Same goes with cubical expansion, also known as volume expansion. Yes, now when a sphere is heated, when a metal sphere is heated, it increases, it increases in size three dimensionally. Yes, let us consider an example at V0 at 0 degree Celsius, now V at T degree Celsius. So here increase in volume will be V minus V0, which is experimentally said that increase in volume, that is V minus V0, is directly proportional to same, that is initial volume and rise in temperature, that is delta T. Therefore, V minus V0 is directly proportional to V0 delta T. Therefore, V minus V0 is equal to gamma V0 delta T, where gamma is coefficient of cubical expansion, also known as coefficient of volume expansion. Final volume after heating is given as V is equal to V0 1 plus gamma delta T. Now, moving ahead, there is a relation between all three of them. That is alpha, beta, gamma. There is a relation between them. Alpha known as coefficient of linear expansion. Beta known as coefficient of aerial expansion. Gamma known as coefficient of cubical expansion. Here, here we comes. Coefficient of linear expansion. The formula says it all. The formula says alpha is equal to delta L upon L0 delta T. Yes. It is defined as the increase in length per unit original length per degree rise in temperature. Similarly, it goes for superficial expansion. It is said as increase in area per unit original area per degree rise in temperature. Same goes with cubical expansion. That is, coefficient of cubical expansion is defined as increase in volume 
per unit original volume per degree rise in temperature. Now all three of them can be said as alpha is equal to beta by 2 is equal to gamma by 3. This was all about expansion in solids that is linear expansion, aerial expansion and volume expansion. When learning more about expansion, thermal expansion, let's move ahead and see thermal expansion in liquids. Now what happens in liquids? Liquids do not have any particular shape. They have shape of container. Hence along with liquid, container also increase. Observed expansion of liquid is known as apparent expansion. That is given by lambda A. Now in this case, coefficient of apparent expansion is defined as apparent increase in volume per unit original volume per degree rise in temperature but here not only the volume increases volume of liquid increases the container also increases hence real expansion which is the addition of apparent expansion and cubical expansion of vessel it is given as increase in that no it is given as real increase in volume per unit original volume per degree rise in temperature hence you can say that real expansion is the sum of apparent expansion and cubical expansion of vessel. This was all about thermal expansion in liquids. Let's move ahead and see what do you mean by thermal expansion in gases. Now gases do not have definite shape. Therefore gases have only volume expansion and in this case the expansion of container is negligible. It is negligible when compared to expansion of gas. Hence thermal expansion is very large for gas when compared to solids and liquids. Now moving ahead, all this expansion, we have one topic known as anomalous behavior of water. Anomalous expansion to be more precise. What do you mean by anomalous expansion? Matter, when heated, it expands and when cool, it contracts. But in case of water, at from 0 degree to 4 degree Celsius, when heated, it contracts and when cool, it expands. Yes. This is the behavior of water from 0 degree Celsius to 4 degree Celsius where gamma is negative. This behavior is known as anomalous expansion. In this case, density of water is maximum at 4 degree Celsius and its volume is minimum at 4 degree Celsius. The graph explains it all. According to this anomalous behavior of water, there is a question that clicks me. The question is, how does aquatic life survive in extremely cold condition? Yes. How does it survive? How does the fish survive in extremely cold condition? What happens here is, when the temperature of the atmosphere falls below 0 degrees Celsius, the water at the surface freezes, but the water under the ice layer remains at 0 degrees Celsius. That helps for the fish to survive in extremely cold condition. That's all about thermal expansion, which includes linear expansion, volume expansion and aerial expansion for thermal expansion solids and it has thermal expansion of liquid and gases too. Thank you. Thanks a lot.